Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Substance live stream. My name is Wes, and I will be your host. And today, I am excited to welcome Tangi. Tangi is an environment artist, and he will be walking us through the stylized painting of a Burton myth. Tangi, hello. Welcome to today's Substance show. Man, so great to have you. How are you doing? Great, thanks. Yeah, so, thanks a lot for uh, joining us here today. So I'm uh, really excited for what you have to share. And uh, so, you know what, why don't I just turn it over? Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're going to be showcasing here today? OK, um, so yes, I'm an environment artist. And I come from uh, Brittany uh, in France. And I started uh, my studies in, uh, in Paris for uh, four years of video game studies. Um, then quickly after, I start working uh, in video game studio, in Cyanid studio, uh, working on various projects like uh, Blood Bowl, the first, the second, Sticks, Arclash Legacy, a very good small project, and Sticks, Dungeon Balls, this kind of thing. Uh, it was kind of uh, uh, cartoon or realistic stuff, so I, I enjoy working on different kind of uh, style and also different kind of stuff. Like I start as a character artist first, um, but I know I definitely mainly an environment artist. And after these uh, three years at uh, Cyanid Studio, I moved to, um, to Poland in Warsaw, working for uh, Epic Game uh, and mainly on Fortnite. Uh, I also help uh, just a little bit on Paragon, and uh, and at the end, uh, just a few months on uh, Outrider. Then I move again uh, in uh, in Quebec uh, to uh, Ubisoft, working on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and uh, once more still in Quebec at uh, Binox, working on Crash Team Racing. Uh, way more cartoony. I really enjoy working on it, uh, especially because it was one of the games I was used to play when I was a kid. And I also uh, help a little bit on Darksider Genesis for Headship uh, Syndicate as freelance. And uh, now I recently decided to to start a full uh, full freelance work. Uh, so I started with uh, this scene from uh, for uh, Adobe, and I'm working uh, now for uh, Wonderstorm, working on a game uh, about uh, Dragon Prince adaptation. Unfortunately, I can't show anything because it's not uh, released yet, yet. But the team is really nice and really skilled, and so that's it for about ten oh, cool. years uh, in video games. Uh, industry yeah that's that's awesome tongi man that's uh that's quite a uh a, quite a wide range of work and and different projects and and things like that and so uh yeah we were super thrilled to have you collaborate with us on creating a special project so uh i believe that uh, we'll probably post the link in the chat but uh we released on our blog post or our substance magazine today the article on the work that you did and so in today's stream that's what we're going to do is go over uh this this very special stylized scene that you created which which was quite amazing uh so you can go ahead and share your screen and we can start getting into it Yep, so this is for the presentation part, and we'll now mainly, we'll see, on, oh, let me set it. So yes, it's, here is a, is a scene uh, I, I did for, will be mainly uh, about the presentation. Um, so it's kind of maybe unusual uh, way of working, but I decided to, to create, a, oh, OK, uh, my screen did a small error. Um, so I decided to create a PBR version first, uh, kind of a classical way like uh, like I did in for Crash Team Racing. And people are doing more or less the same workflow, I think, for um, a game like Overwatch and this kind of stuff. And so I create two different kind of lighting. And then after, I. Um, I push it into completely unlit version with uh, with light baking and everything really like only only diffuse uh, version. 
And so, uh, yeah, I will show you a bit the, about the process I uh, used to do it. So the, the idea behind that, it's, it's not only to, to create a three version, uh, it's to, um, during production uh, for Unlit, uh, working with Unlit uh, uh, technique, it's sometimes very destructive. And when you're working uh, with a team, uh, with art director and a lead, it's really helpful to to iterate really quickly. And with some light, you know, dynamic lighting stuff, it's way easier to iterate before going to the real Unlit version. Wow, awesome. So um, with this, this is a very stylized piece. And so uh, I, I guess you're probably getting ready to get into your references. But uh, so so Tanji, you're actually from Brittany, uh, which is a, a Celtic land uh, heavy with myths, legends, and history. So there's a, a lot of, of interest, interest, excuse me, interesting aspects of this. And uh, so, yeah, if you could just speak more towards that. I guess you're getting ready to get into it here with your references. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I live, uh, so I, I was born in, in Brittany, uh, Quimper more precisely, and yeah, it's uh, really, uh, uh, there is a really strong culture, they are the, their own language, and uh, the, about myths about uh, uh, Corrigan, because this is a house for, uh, for uh, a Corrigan, it's this creature, um, uh, if you don't know it, it's uh, their cousins are the leprechauns, um, and they mainly live close to the to the ocean. Uh, and of course, Brittany got uh, many other uh, many other special vibe for me. Like uh, I spent all my first twenty years almost there. So for me, the the flowers, the the, the landscapes. The alcohol also a bit, but uh, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of uh, really uh, define me. Not the alcohol part, maybe, but uh, it's really uh, something I really wanted to to create for something really personal stuff. Because in the industry, of course, we are used to work for big projects, and uh, so it's not always only your uh, your vision. But in all those references, there is many things that are really uh, connected with, I will say not really my past, but uh, my experience, like, uh, you know, the sardine tin, uh, it was my, my father work uh, for a, a factory doing uh, sardine tins and the, the flowers the name Hortensia in French, I can't remember the name in, in English, sorry, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really a specific one. It can uh, the this uh, color can change uh, if the the ground, the soil is different. Uh, if the acidity is different, it will be blue, and uh, if it's basic, it will be uh, red. And all these kind of small elements are really was really fun to uh, to check references for it. Um, so and yeah, mainly for the. Maybe start for the, the more technical workflow. Um, the the way I uh, it start this this project it was really it was really uh, amazing to be able to to work on some, something like uh, there is no constraint at all. So everything was possible, but sometimes it's a bit uh, a bit uh, frightening to 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 have too much uh, freedom. So I decided to take, uh, I think, about two or three days just to think about the idea. Uh, I, my first idea was completely different, uh, to be honest. It was uh, a giant uh, door from the city of East, still uh, related to Brittany, but completely different. Uh, it was kind of, I wanted to create something kind of epic, uh, uh, this epic door. But in the other hand, I, uh, it's, it's kind of common to create this kind of uh, stuff in video game industry. So I decided to move to something a bit more, let's say, original, more personal. And, and yes, for this part, I, I think it's really important. It's, it's the same in the industry, just to take time to, to just think about your idea. Uh, when you are finishing an old project, uh, start to think uh, about the next one and maybe uh, uh, try to note a few ideas, not 
not just you uh, taking one but explore different stuff uh, and maybe after uh, um, a night of thinking it will be completely different so yeah just takes time for pre-production and thinking about your project before even before uh, drawing uh, of course drawing uh, is really essential essential ah, essential Sorry, part for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get it. Hey, uh, I trip over my words too, man. I, I'm with you. <laughs> and so yeah, I start to. I'm not uh, the drawing part is not my my best skill, as you can see. So uh, don't be afraid to 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 draw or to paint. Mm -hmm. It's really helped to define shapes, and it's completely different than starting uh, immediately uh, in 3D. And even I start with uh, real pen and paper. It's uh, the feeling is not the same. Uh, of course, after I use a uh, synthetic to to make something a bit more clean uh, to define the shape a bit a bit more. But yeah, I'll, uh, always start with drawing, even if you're not good at drawing. So. I guess the 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 main point is just you know trying to get from what's in your what's in your mind to just try to get something down out of your mind and get it you know like you said on paper or just you know something you can visualize and don't stay stuck to your first idea uh, mm. because sometimes you're already uh, attached to your idea because you create it it's your kind of it's your baby you want to to see it grow <laughs> but yes sometimes it's uh, better to have i don't know two or three different ideas and um, and just to to choose at the end and with a more objective view maybe yeah so, so let's go in for more really technical parts the 3d um so yeah it's the uh, same kind of the same Logic for 3D, I start with, uh, most of the time I'm starting with ZBrush uh, for the really, really basic shapes, just to get the, um, just the, the volumes and the feeling because it's really uh, an artistic soft for modeling, uh, less technical than 3ds Max. But for this project, I use both at the beginning, but with really, really basic shape. As you can see the, the clouds are uh, almost uh, uh, cubes uh, because uh, it's really faster to to iterate this way. You can see the first version, the window was completely different, more realistic uh, window uh, because yeah, it's really easier to iterate with uh, basic shape for especially if you want for cartoon uh, 3D to have something really clean. At the end, you can add some. Uh, turbo smooth in 3ds max or uh, divided and it will really clean uh, your your shapes uh, because if you are really too uh, high poly first it will be a nightmare just to clean it correctly mm -hmm. um, so yeah the zbrush part uh, on this project on, on this project it was pretty simple um, i'm mainly using it just to uh, to add for more organic stuff uh, like the hexagons of the soccer ball, or of course to create the, the sand. I'm using the base for the most part. I'm using the basic brushes. The only one I'm using, a uh, custom one, is uh, the extreme polish from Orb, uh, an amazing artist too, uh, and he. Uh, is this this brush is really nice because it's kind of combines the uh, flatten and the smooth at the same time and to clean stuff it's really useful but other thing is really basic uh, basic brushes um, and yeah I try to avoid using uh, alpha in uh, in the in the texture for brushes because it's adding tons of uh, noise and sometimes it's look nice but uh, at the end, if you want to uh, iterate and move stuff, it will be stretching. And I think it's really a trap in in um, in Zebra to use alpha or to add details uh, at this step. Even for realistic stuff, I I prefer to uh, add details in Substance Painter or and directly in the engine with tailing, texture, or this kind of stuff. Your resolution will be uh, definitely 
better. Uh, I know sometimes it's it's a bit sad to leave your ZBrush kind of at this step, but yeah, it's okay. Can move. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, more. It's a bit uh, frightening uh, slide. Um, so yeah, so, so the funniest part, of course, it's in, it's the texturing. Always be for me the, the most funny part. And in Substance Painter, uh, the, it's the same idea. Where the way I'm working, I'm just creating uh, basic uh, uh, an empty folder with just a solid color into it. I uh, use uh, solid color for any elements like. Uh, uh, the sun at the beginning will be only yellow, the flower on only one color, only blue, and these kind of things. I am not adding any detail, or variation, or, or, or occlusion, or this kind of stuff first, because I want to to be sure my colors are working. And because if you you scene should be working even with solid color. If it's not working with uh, solid color, it's it's yeah, it will be very, very hard to, to get something nice with more information. So really, this step, it's really, uh, really important. And you can even um, uh, preview it if you are doing for video game, preview it in your engine before uh, moving to the next step. Uh, and of course, iteration, uh, making many iteration about uh, your colors and trying sometimes really crazy stuff. Uh, first, for this scene, Unfortunately, I didn't save it, but I try with completely different um, color uh, color for the overall scene. I wanted something more original, like uh, almost only blue and uh, and white. Uh, but it was, I think, too original because uh, at the end, the final part with uh, the brush strokes al already um, give you many informations and. Uh, having two original uh, color will be hard for your eyes to to get the, the shapes and the volume. So I decided to have something more um, more simple. I think it's really important to to choose your fights, uh, making original things and the modeling, texturing, effects, and everything. It's kind of a bad idea. Just uh, choose your battle and choose one thing that will be really focused on. And not uh, spreading on too many uh, too many things. Um, yeah, for the I also uh, in Substance Painter uh, the default uh, texture I mainly uh, uh, for uh, realistic stuff a bit uh, a bit noisy uh, and for uh, real stylized uh, stuff I I create my own set of texture. It's kind of really basic. Uh, with different shapes and gradients, as you can see in the the left part. Um, I also create a custom generators to uh, apply it, but I will show you uh, maybe later. Uh, really, in action, <laughs> will be uh, easier to 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 get it. Um, and yes, yeah, the same for the ID generator. It's just a bit uh, customized, just a little bit with uh, Substance Designer. Because yeah, I really like to use uh, software as tools, like uh, using uh, Substance Designer to create uh, tools for Substance Painter, uh, going back to ZBrush for something, back to Max for another stuff, and baking light information uh, in Marmor Set or this kind of thing. I'm don't I try to not to only use one soft. Of course, doing uh, using. 10 different software, you can lose time and it can be really annoying. But sometimes software are more useful for specific stuff. And I like to just to, to pick what I want uh, on each uh, software. Yeah, that was one of the uh, interesting parts from the article on Substance Magazine, where you were kind of talking about that workflow and you were saying that you were moving between all these different software uh, is kind of part of a, a different type workflow. So yeah, that, that was really interesting to see. And uh, I like what you're saying about the software just being tools. I mean, just tools in a toolbox and you know, you're just grabbing whatever tool works best for a certain, for a certain aspect or technique. Uh, so that's really interesting. Yeah, so yeah, for me, the, the only objective is just to 
not for this scene, it's a bit different, but in video game industries, the objective is just to create a, a good game and not only a good looking game, but a good game. And sometimes you got to, to make choices and not doing just a, just a scene for, for art station. It's really nice for our ego, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, this is a, g a good thing uh, for this uh, for this project because it wasn't really in-game stuff, so there was more freedom and less constraint. But uh, yeah, for video games, never forget that uh, the final uh, product is the main objective. So oh yeah, and so it's basically yeah, the the different steps or the the final PB, uh, PBR version uh, in uh, maybe I, I can show it in in Marmor set. Uh, it's a kind of simple scene with uh, with uh, with just uh, a lighting like metal nets, rough nets, and all this kind of thing. Uh, I didn't push it so much. I still. Uh, any uh, sparkling on the sun and this kind of things. But I didn't push it too much because the final uh, objective was still the end lead version. But um, uh, I pushed it maybe a bit too much if I was in production uh, to do the end lead version. But I didn't push that much either. It was just a basic, uh, basic scene. And I also can maybe show you the night version, not saving. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, so yeah, it's exactly the same, uh, the same uh, materials, almost the same. Uh, I add emissive uh, on the bottle and this kind of thing, but it's uh, a scene should work, uh, texturing should work on, uh, light or day version, um, not uh, adding uh, light information at this step of the process. Uh, I know it's really fun to add light information, but keep it for for, for later. Maybe back to, to the slide. And yeah, because uh, I, I write it. Uh, the contrast in your albedo, uh, it's really dangerous to use a really strong contrast because the contrast is more, uh, you have to, to keep your scene really easy to read. And contrast will be done mainly with shadows and lighting. If you add too much contrast into your albedo, uh, it will create kind of illusion. We don't know what is behind what is in the foreground. Um, for example, very simple code uh, for your eyes is uh, horizontal are um, bright and the verticals are uh, darkened uh, uh, just because of yeah we are used to to uh, to live outside. Currently, it's not really the case, but most of the time, um, the sun is from uh, it's lighting from the top and your brain will be less uh, uh, there is less uh, effort to do if your scene is uh, is working this way so yeah but if you want to make variation uh, and different elements uh, don't hesitate to uh, to use and abuse of the complementary colors uh, it's also hard for cartoon style a really more vivid feeling um, yeah just use color all the time, uh, not just uh, if you got some uh, a, bl a blues, a blue version. For example, the bottle, the bottle in the at the bottom is more blue, and at the top it's more green. Uh, the occlusion is more red, and even if it's on um, a blue elements, uh, this kind of stuff. Just mix color, and you will be surprised that sometime, sometime, mm, even with uh, completely. Uh, I don't know, uh, out of space color, it really adds some uh, uh, some good feeling. And it's not only for cartoon stuff, even for in, in reality for uh, natural and uh, organic stuff, you can check it. Uh, 
uh, the dust, the rust, it sells uh, tons of colors into it. Uh, of course, uh, not the same proportion. Uh, keep the main color uh, the same color, but adding a little uh, little uh, highlights from different color, it uh, really can add a good feeling. And yeah, as you can see, I just put the, in the on top of the middle uh, a level from uh, from Photoshop to see it. I try to avoid using the the beginning of the histogram, like everything under uh, uh, 80 uh, is really dark, and everything after uh, 2020 it's really too bright, so especially for PBR because. Uh, of course, if you like, uh, if if one area is in the shadow, and it's I don't know, let's say uh, uh, 80 uh, uh, gray, dark 80, uh, in the shadow it will look sometimes pure black. And if there is something else in in uh, zero, it will also look pure black. So meaning you're losing information. Um, you don't want to lose information. And yeah. the same for yeah, same for the lighting part. Uh, it's it would be burning. Of course, there is always exceptions, uh, but it's kind of good rules. There is a trap I have seen many times in production. If people most of the time know this rule about PBR, not too dark, not too bright, but uh, in uh, in practice, <laughs> many uh, uh, many artists and I did it first. Uh, are putting everything uh, close to the uh, 80. So everything looks dark or everything looks bright. But the thing is you you have to use all the step inside 80 and and, uh, and 2020. It's uh, not just to, because yes, there is many uh, debugs uh, preview. Uh, if it's uh, completely pink, oh, it's uh, it's too dark and I you just push this color to, to to 80 uh, to a, an 80 gray but the thing is if you are doing it uh, it will be the same it will be as dark as uh, another color that was really uh, at his good position so yeah just be careful about tools just try to understand tools and not just to be uh, to be controlled by your tools <laughs> <laughs> yeah, materials are never really as dark as, as we think they are. You know, it's like what you have in your mind. It's never really that dark. So yeah, that's 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 great. So yeah, go back to this slide. So it would be pretty quick. Uh, so yeah, after I did the, the lighting for the uh, the night version, uh, I bake everything on uh, in uh, in marmosets uh, they got many uh, maps you can export like uh, diffuse lighting many lighting stuff i don't remember even the, the name of all those those maps uh, even the roughness uh, can be useful uh, for the unlit version because you can use it as a mask uh, mixing with uh, generator slow blur and this kind of thing and can bring information to your to your scene uh, more mask you got it's more use it will be at the end maybe you will not use it but still it can be uh, we will see maybe it will be useful maybe adding one uh, secondary or third uh, color into your scene or uh, this kind of stuff yeah the slow blur magic uh, so yeah, I recently discovered that uh, slow blur was also in Substance Painter. I uh, use it a little bit in Designer, but yeah, it's also uh, existing in uh, in Painter. Uh, it's working the same the same way. Uh, and so yeah, it's maybe so many uh, array here. Uh, I mainly just uh, use a, a slow blur with uh, custom. Uh, uh, texture like uh, like I show you before, uh, so more uh, cartoon uh, uh, custom noise and just adding a sub blur in it and and I 
I create, I don't know, many variations of this slope blur and I mix in, uh, mixing them together uh, with, uh, with black masks, um, level, grunge. The 3D distance, also I will show you later, we use it uh, to define some area where you want it to, to use slope blur to be really effective. And um, what I did, yeah, of course I used the uh, instance uh, for every texture set, not for every everything, but uh, most of the of the workflow of the the, the elements are instanced, uh, mainly because my computer is not so powerful, and it's really really help to uh, to to work on different uh, uh, texture set. I and it's also nice because I. Uh, as you can see on this uh, slide, there is uh, four texture set, but uh, at the end I add three more texture set. Uh, one for the sky because I, I did not know I, I wanted to add the sky at this step, and uh, uh, also add fun with kind of uh, volumetric particles of fog, and of course um, the stroke, the three D stroke uh, asset. And yeah. Go back to ZBrush. Uh, it's it's pretty quick. It's just to create the the stroke uh, 3D model. So basically, I just use a low poly version. Uh, apply a Dynamesh, a really uh, low resolution Dynamesh. Uh, I uh, fill the the gaps and uh, and sometimes even add uh, insert mesh to fill the gaps. Uh, Dynamesh again using the tri dynamic. Uh, it's really useful when you uh, use it in the invert function uh, with Alt. It uh, fills the holes. Um, then I uh, add uh, a modifier. It's not called a modifier in ZBrush, but uh, deformers uh, called uh, inflate just to push your basically pushing your modeling. Uh, so I relax, uh, then relax just to have something a bit more smooth um, because I, I don't want to have really uh, uh, crisp uh, cavities or edges. It's just to create some kind of uh, a shell on top of all, uh, all the mesh. And I finish with uh, Decimation Master uh, with adding a few, uh, few strokes with the curve strap snap. It's a brush in ZBrush. And basically, you just uh, use your same thing and you just draw uh, on top of your mesh and it creates this kind of um, this kind of plane and it's really natural to to uh, to convert them into uh, stroke painting uh, in a second step. Okay, it's finished with ZBrush. Go back to uh, to Painter. Uh, so yes, yeah, the low poly, as you can see, it's sorry for the poly, it's not really well optimized. Uh, but uh, for the so far to create the, the albedo, the diffuse of the, the shell mesh, the mesh where I um, I create the, the stroke effects, uh, I just uh, bake uh, every, uh, my uh, low poly uh, with the, the final albedo uh, onto the, on the, uh, the stroke asset mesh. This way I just duplicating the information from uh, the previous albedo to the new one. Of course, I'm cleaning it uh, sometime with, uh, with a really uh, real end paint, uh, but I try to to use it at the end of the process all the time because it's really destructive. So this is a good thing with Painter. You can really do your base uh, stuff with uh, generator and uh, filters, then uh, doing your end painting stuff. And yeah, for the to create the opacity uh, map of the strokes, um, I use a uh, an UV uh, UV map just to to uh, to see the outline of all your uh, your shells in your UVs. 
uh, this way I subtract it uh, with a blurry effect just in order to not not having a uh, too sharp uh, border on you can see there is still area where it's you can see it's uh, plain but most of the time it's really useful to remove those elements and for the st st stroke effects it's uh, the brush effects it's uh, almost the same as uh, the painting of the uh, of the albedo it's uh, just a grunge, uh, grunge map uh, with solid color with on top of it uh, uh, blur slopes uh, just with some uh, custom texture uh, with this kind of uh, it's just a tiling texture with this kind of uh, stroke paint and yeah it's uh, it's mainly this and it's just really uh, yeah, it, the end painting stuff, it's for most of us that people that are doing uh, end lit and uh, end painting, it's the most funny part. So I know it's hard to wait till the end before uh, end painting it and your synthetic because it's really, the flow is really nice. It's really like you, you feel like you're a real artist when you're really painting. It's really important to, to end with this step. But do not forget to to uh, to iterate with more um, procedural stuff before. But yeah, at the end you can really enjoy just the, the painting phase. So yeah, the final final rendering of this scene maybe we'll show it in marmor sets. Yeah, the only reason why I'm I'm doing the showcase in uh, this one in Marmor Set and not in Painter is because you can't have completely unlit rendering with opacity uh, in Painter, but other things are, are the same. So yeah, showing this little scene. Uh, yeah, maybe you can. You can see without strokes, and basically this version can be used uh, really easily in video games uh, projects uh, if there is light baking, of course. Um, the stroke tape uh, is I wanted to have fun because <laughs> it was uh, a little scene. It's maybe maybe a bit more complicated for complete video game. But this same step already can work with there is still unpainting strokes. Yeah, the hand painted strokes, it just it looks amazing. Thanks. And it's really fun to do. <laughs> yeah. This is the best part. And yeah, also a little sky maybe can because pretty sure people ask for for the wireframe and I already apologize for it. Uh, so remove maybe the strokes. So it's basically very uh, low poly with a uh, tessellation on top of it. Uh, so yeah, not so much optimized, but it's not crazy uh, crappy too. And Maybe you want to see also the stroke low poly. So it look like like this. Uh, so maybe yeah, you recognize uh, the simulation master. Uh, and if I remove the wireframe, yeah, only the strokes. <laughs> it look like that. Uh, so it's pretty obvious that you can see the the tiling of the uh, of the um, opacity uh, uh, texture that I use to to generate this one. And what can I display? To yeah, the particles maybe. Yeah, there's this kind of volumetric particles. I did it in Substance Painter. It's kind of <laughs> old school way of doing things 
I'd say. Uh, yeah, it's basically it's just a grid, like duplicate many plane to create kind of it's not voxels, but uh, information every uh, uh, like uh, many cubes, and just to create this volumetric effect. It's not perfect, but does the trick. You can see it. Um, oh, also, yeah, one of the one of the difference between the PBR version and the and the unlit version is there is no inside like the little chair I did with the uh, beer caps and the uh, ice cream stick because it wasn't the same UVs. Uh, and I didn't want it to duplicate the UVs for each uh, chair and table. Uh, this is a problem when you bake your lighting. Uh, you can't uh, reuse uh, assets. And, and yeah, the scale is pretty basic, kind of Milky Way. It's only done, uh, I just use uh, Substance painter to create it with generator. It's definitely not well optimized too, but it was pretty fun to do it everything in painter for it. Um, so yeah, maybe going back to painter. Oh yeah, and I create some. So yeah, as you can see, oh, it's not the same control. So yeah, I preview it in with the base color um, preview because if I'm activated the material preview, can see it's slightly different, uh, but it's useful if you want to preview the particles and the and the brush strokes uh, because if you are using it only here, will there is no opacity though, so it's you still can work uh, like this, but you can't preview the, the opacity to prevent from, because here it's not, it's it's okay to work with uh, this rendering, but to uh, remove uh, more um, lighting elements are, maybe I can bring this in the channel. Yeah, here I add a specular level, um, channel uh, to put it to pure black. This way it's removing, kind of removing uh, lighting information. The same for the roughness, it just to put it pure white. This way you can preview your your uh, your scene uh, almost like uh, ended version. And yeah, maybe. Yeah, I can show you the the custom nodes. Uh, so I create a oh, little folder with it. Uh, okay, so so first, just I just create a basic folder. So and I put inside just a fill layer with a solid color. Uh, for PBR uh, version, I just add the uh, roughness, well, the same uh, solid color for the roughness. Then I put it into a folder and creating a black mask for it. And then, so yeah, can display the, the default uh, ID uh, sele uh, selector when you right click. Yeah, you know, you can find it here at color selection. But I create uh, a new one because there is few uh, options here, but there is few options that I wanted to use. It's for example, uh, here. So I, I add a level into it with a blur. Uh, for example, you can, it's kind of tolerant, so you can have something bigger, this kind of thing. So it's also uh, available in color selection, but the thing is maybe, you, I don't know if you can see it, the resolution is not crazy, but there is um, some time kind of uh, pixelate uh, uh, 
uh, view of your your ideas but if you with kind of little blur with a level it can create something uh, way cleaner yeah that's that's super nice it's great so so this this filter you created here you you did this in designer yourself yeah yeah it's really basic in designer so yeah i just created in designer this is, yeah as i told you i really like the the bridge between a, a designer and painter if if i want something it's mainly the way i'm using designer for me it's more a, a toolbox for painter uh this is the way i'm using it and the same as you can see here uh, in in your color, so in by the default, there is no uh, I don't know how to say option of fusion or this kind of things. Uh, the blending mode for the, the blending the mode, yeah. yeah. I think it's a French uh, translation from. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, and yeah, for these filters, it's available. So, for example, uh, the, in my workflow, sometimes uh, uh, so I want just to remove one element. And this way, I can put a, uh, another filter on top of it and just subtract it. Uh, and with the basic one, you can't do it, I think. Uh, so for yeah. me, it's, it's sometimes really useful because I'm making almost everything in the black mask. Uh, so that's it for this this one. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I didn't find a, a way to to pick the color uh, automatically because with the color selection, uh, you just pick color and it switched to the ID. Uh, it's really nice, but I don't know how to do it. Maybe a substance uh, programmer can explain me. For me, I, I have to switch to the ID map, then pick the color. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we have like a a, a built-in way of of, ac of accessing that. But uh, that that's that's really great. We should we'll definitely take this back to the team and, and let them look at this because uh, that's one of the best things that I like about you know substance uh, and designer is like you can look at designer and and extend the tool set. Like this is a great example you're showing where you're like, well, you guys had this tool. It's not really exactly what I wanted. I can build my own, and you have the flexibility to do that. That's that's really cool. Yeah, it's really something I really enjoy because there is, yeah, there is not really a limit if you if you master designer. Uh, of course, I'm not mastering it <laughs> completely, uh, but still, it's it's help. And yeah, so another one. Yeah. So yeah, the same. Just new folder, uh, black mask with ID of the sun. Um, solid fill layer with just one color. Then on top of it, I add another uh, really basic uh, uh, solid color with a black mask once again. But for this one, I add this. Uh, so it's really similar to the add fill. Uh, just let me check the difference. OK, yeah, it's really similar, but uh, on this one, there is a level inside, like uh, black, white, uh, and everything, and a sharpen, a blur, a two kind of blur, and something I really <laughs> use is the invert, uh, because of course you can add a, an invert on top of your uh, your stack here, but for example, if you subtract all your uh, your black mask on top of it with uh, uh, with a grunge texture and you want to add a level, the level will affect all the the generator. Oh, yes. And, uh, yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, I run into that. It would be, you know what? Now that we're seeing this, it'd be awesome if like on the fill, if we had an option, like when you create a fill, there's like a levels control on the fill. Yeah, it's like, yes, like it's a, exactly what you did. Yeah, that's, yeah. So I'd say the, the best thing, it's if it will be possible, <laughs> For next update, maybe to, yeah. to create uh, folders inside. Yeah, and this way it will be for other option will also uh, be really yeah. useful. Um, and also, so yo, the invert is really useful for me because sometimes my grunge, uh, my uh, grunge map, I wanted to have, for example, for this one, the to invert it. Uh, and it's more or less always the same. All my map, I prefer the invert version. So maybe I should uh, <laughs> yeah. change it from the base. But like with this uh, node, I can do it on the fly. 
and it's helped me uh, a lot and the same for the yeah for the level because when you see this map sometimes you say oh it's it's enough when you work but sometimes you want just the really uh, uh really just tiny uh, elements and having almost everything black and and on, only a few elements in white and with the level you can you can do it and so so yeah and yeah the slope blur so this is a default um, so it's kind of magic effect um so yeah just add so it's just a filter so just add slope blur uh maybe i will just create a new one to display it uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. <laughs> I just found out that this slope blur was in Painter. I think it was like last week or a week and a half ago. <laughs> like I didn't even <laughs> think about it. But yeah, I think I saw someone else in the chat said oh, I didn't know it was in Substance Painter. But yeah, yeah, I discovered it kind of recently. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, yes, that is kind of tricky thing because if you drag your custom texture here, nothing changing. Yeah, there is just you have to to select the custom noise here. Uh, it will not update automatically. Uh, uh, uh. Now, Tongi, for this, you're using this filter to help create the brush stroke effect. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you just change the parameters here. Yeah, it's as you see. I just did it in yeah, uh, 20 seconds, and it's already giving kind of more uh, painting uh, feeling. And of course, you can, uh, depending on which texture you are using, it's completely different uh, kind of flow or or brush effect that are, yeah, all of them are not working. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can still, yeah, tweak with the parameters and so yeah, it's really nice and really easy to use thing and so yeah for this one that's it and oh yes yeah, a crunch version mm -mm -mm. i think i already no i don't check it uh yeah this one i already talk about did i talk about this version yeah i already talk about it here uh yeah it's here it's more for the uh, 3D distance, it's basic uh, generator. Um, uh, most of the time, people are not using it, but it, it's not so so uh, so easy to move this kind of 3D sphere. Uh, but it's really help to define area where you want informations, and you can yeah add a kind of noisy uh, uh, grunge onto it and to define the mask and we'll apply just your effect there we just swap it uh, with and um, here yeah because i use it a lot in in the scene you can also use a blur slope uh, on top of everything with just uh, creating uh, an empty layer maybe i can create it pretty quick just an empty layer with uh, pass through and how oh. and it affects everything and this way I, uh, I use it to to merge element together as you can see the the, the rocks the pebbles are merging with the sun uh, like this and of course you can mixing uh, slow blur everywhere on the black mask and the on your assets and the last one yeah it's a sharp uh yes yeah, the basic the default sharp version i've not not so many options um and i try to recreate uh as a filter as a, the smart uh, smart sharp from um, uh, photoshop mm. with the radius uh it's affecting different radius and sometimes it's creating less noisy information. Uh, it's basically just a high pass and overlay with a level on top of your uh, on top of your textures. And then I also add uh, the default uh, sharpen inside too. So it's 
possible to mix them together. And also kind of blurry effect this way it, it can can get different different sharp uh, feeling. Um, yes, that's it for the custom nodes. I have to create new one, but yeah. Um, mm -mm, yeah, I think it's uh, basically that's it. So, uh, Tangi, uh, just just one question. I was going to ask, yep. like, some of the like the 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 paint strokes that you have, like like here in Marmoset, where you showed, um, it looks like you have some paint strokes, like I guess maybe around like the clouds and stuff, where you have some planes that are intersecting. You said you painted those in Substance Painter. Can can you show how you did that? Oh uh, yeah, I'm trying to find them. Is it in this project file? I don't want you to have to open yeah, it. Yeah, it's in this yeah, file. Okay. Yeah, I just remove this. Dun, dun, dun. But the the uh, texture set wasn't loaded, so it will take just a little bit a little bit more time. Okay. So I have to preview the opacity. Uh -uh. Because on this, you're actually using opacity as well, right? So these are a bunch yeah, exactly. of planes. OK. Yeah. yeah, and it's almost the same as I uh, show with the slow blur, uh, except this, uh, for, for this effect, I uh, use the slow blur on the opacity. But basically, uh, it's, uh, no. it's the exact same process. Um, the only different, I'd say, Maybe I can display the, the black mask. So a lot of the, the hand-painted look that you're getting here, it, it, you're establishing that through using a lot of these procedural methods, like you're saying, showing your own custom generators. But but are you having to actually grab like a paintbrush and paint as well? Yeah. Or are you saving that to the end, you said? Uh, yeah, it's a bit sad because I, I really enjoy and painting stuff. Uh, of course, I, uh, I clean things uh, like the old school way. And it was really, really fun. I really enjoy to paint it with, with uh, you know, will uh, will uh, pencil with, uh, with the Cintiq. Uh, but yeah, maybe uh, I'd say 80% it's done procedurally. Wow. Um, and uh, at first, when I start the project, I uh, was thinking it will be, uh, I don't know, maybe just 20% procedurally uh, because I wanted to have fun with hand painting. But uh, yeah, when I work on it, it's it was, uh, it's it's already uh, working. Uh, so yeah, why uh, why <laughs> yeah. working more? It's it's already working. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Um, so. Yeah, this is a map I create. I think there is a way to create it in. Uh, sorry, to I don't know why it's loading so much. I reassure people it's not. I wasn't working with uh, ten seconds of lag all the time. Uh, it was pretty smooth. Um, and yeah, this map is from. Uh, so I can maybe display it. Uh, It's basically just my UVs with a blur on it with the uh, UV edges. Oh, I think my, sorry, just a second. Uh, I think my, because I'm using a, a small keyboard uh, uh, for my shortcuts, like no Stromo stuff, and I think it's deconnected. So this is the reason oh, why. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is the reason why it's not shortcut are not working. Okay, nice, better. Uh, so yeah, it's basically just the, the UVs. I use it to, to create just a map that will be uh, on the border, just to and I subtract it. No, saving, and I subtract it uh, to make it uh, disappear on the on the borders. Okay. Um, I use it two times, once just to be sure there will be no uh, really solid borders. 
and another time with a slope blur to uh, to just to have something a bit more painterly. So yeah, you can see it's the opacity looks a, for this matte like it. It's yeah, it's like this. Uh, you can see the end painting. It's mainly yeah, for the really uh, for the small plane. And just to yeah to to make to to focus on more important thing on specific areas. But yeah, the basic personal stuff look like like this one. Wow. There is <laughs> many uh, generators, but it's basically just uh, slow blur fill levels. It's nothing crazy. It's really uh, just tweaking stuff. And oh yeah, the particle one, it's funny one. Don't know if it's so important I display it or maybe here. Yeah, it was done in funny way, just to be sure. Nope. Neither. Yeah, I try to organize my folder, but it's not always a... Uh, yeah, exactly. So this one, it's... But it should be a different map here. Uh, for the... Oh, yeah, because I'm not in opacity. Yeah, that's funny. I'm seeing like all the names fill layer two, copy one. Like I do that. It's like I'm afraid to name layers because it's like I'm committing to it. Like, oh wait, I named this. I have to do it this way now. But most of the time, you can see the the biggest folder are renamed with yeah. colors. But inside, yeah, I like to yeah a <laughs> bit of chaos inside. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, yeah, using the fill. Uh, in the field, you can use a spherical projection as a, I think it's pretty new uh, feature. Um, maybe if we see the, will it work? Yeah. No, not that this one. Uh, I think with a different, uh, different background would be easier to see it. No, I did. Yeah. And this way you can create kind of volumetric sphere. And because there is a uh, slow blur and a subtracting uh, grunge on top of it, it kind of creates this shaft, lighting shaft uh, effect. So it was mainly to use this this feature I never used before. Um, um, and the thing is, it's really nice. It's really easy to, to edit it, like to scale and stuff. And, um, and I think that's, that's it. I think the sky, it's, the sky was the same. I, I used just generator to create the, the, the stars and, um, for the Milky Way, it's just uh, a cube done with the fill uh, uh, projection. Yeah, maybe. Wait, display it here. Yep, for me, I think it's. I, I think I didn't forget stuff. Maybe. Yeah. No, this is <laughs> such an amazing scene. I, I just love this. Um, if yeah, if that's if that's it for your your presentation, we can jump into the Q and A portion. Uh, can look over at uh, what they have queuing up for me. So yeah, let why, why don't we do that? Um, so we'll skip that going here. And we, we've got our man Vincent. Uh, Vincent from from uh, he handles all of our community needs. Vincent Go, he's out there. So I always like to give him a big shout. Uh, he's He's working on uh, handing me some comments here, and here we go. Uh, all right, so let's start with that. So hardware, first question, hardware. 
And this this one's this one's a good one. Uh, what is the brand of Tongi's headset? So, wh what headset are you working with? <laughs> uh, this headset is uh, uh, it's Manowar uh, Razer, I think. Yeah, it's yeah Razer brand. Yeah, I have I have one That's, of those as well. Yeah, but as you can see, it's broken at the top of it. So oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, so what do you have wrapped at the top of it then? Yeah, it's just because it's not broken. It's just because a uh, moss is was uh, squashed, I think. Oh uh, yeah. And so I add a <laughs> custom custom moss into it, and I just wrap it with uh, uh, adhesive. So yeah. Man, this is yeah. So you so you're into heavy customization, man. You customize <laughs> your filters and painter, and you customize your headsets. It's great. Uh, all right, so the next one is inspiration, and and so this one, and I and I'm I'm terrible. I cannot pronounce names, and I, I really can't speak very well myself. So I always mess this up. But this is asking, were you inspired by? I think it's is it Mike Benz? B E N C. Oh, yes. Okay, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I have to pronounce it either. Uh, Mickey Bench. Oh. I'd say, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I uh, it's uh, written in the article and on my station. It's really, a, uh, really a main inspiration. Uh, creating mainly uh, for uh, characters, and his stuff is really amazing. Uh, his <clears throat> brush strokes are uh, are really well done. Like everything is calculated to be at the perfect uh, spot. So yeah, uh, I'd like to have the same quality for all the scene, but it's not yet the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at the chat. You know what? Um, I forgot. Uh, Jerice is in the chat. So he mentioned to me <laughs> that uh, I forgot to do a shout to Maureen as well. So Maureen, uh, as you know, she she works on our uh, communications team. She is in the chat as well. She she helps helps run the the chat as along with Vincent. So Maureen, I'm so sorry. I forgot to throw the shout out to you as well. Uh, yeah, thank you for the article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, she so, can correct tons of uh, mistakes I, I write. I write into it, and so yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, so here's some questions on setting up the scene. Uh, so it's asking, did you use proxies in the project, or how, how do you? How did you? Uh, I'm sorry. How did you start? Uh, what do you mean by proxy? I don't get it. Uh, I'm not sure. That's just uh, kind of how it came in. So maybe it's just talking about like. Um, did you, um, well, maybe it's like, cause it's asking how'd you get started. So like, maybe it's, d did you start with like, you know, small primitive shapes to kind of like maybe block out what the, what the overall form was going to look like, or did you know, okay, I'm going to start and I'm going to model the, the soccer ball, like very detailed to start, or like, I guess proxy shapes, like cubes, spheres, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, so in this, in this slide, it's, I really try to use the most basic shape possible at the beginning and really, really basic one. Uh, sometimes I do it in in, uh, in ZBrush. Uh, for example, in ZBrush, I'm using uh, a lot uh, Decimation Master, but with a really small resolution uh, for two reasons. The f uh, one of the obvious reasons, uh, it will be way more optimized and way faster to, to, uh, to move stuff and everything. And there is also another thing, it's when you are working uh, for example, in, in ZBrush, you always want to add details, but if your resolution it's it's too low, you can't add details. So uh, so we have to stay really uh, really focused on the global shape. But uh, yeah, sometimes it's really dirty uh, ZBrush. Uh, everything is merging together. But I really like to start with uh, with ZBrush to to get uh, the volumes. But uh, but of course, previously uh, drawing. Uh, is a essential, essential step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you do the? I guess you do the the, the initial block out in ZBrush as well. Then, like just starting yeah. completely there. Uh, this project is kind of exception because I'm uh, I'm using uh, mainly uh, 3ds Max for the for the blocking because mm -hmm. there is many simple assets uh, that can be done really quickly in. A, in uh, 3ds Max, I'll also use the very first step in ZBrush, but I quickly move to to uh, to 3ds Max. Uh, but yeah, I, the most of the time I just using ZBrush, and it's way more artistic 
friendly and I prefer to to keep the technical um, software and things at the end except if it's for uh, it's, if it's adds uh, destructive things like uh, end painting uh, unfortunately uh, mm, okay. Um, so yeah, this other question here, uh, again, kind of on setting up the scene, this is uh, when you mentioned contrast in albedo is a bad thing, uh, is the con is that meaning the contrast of values or the contrast of saturation? Yeah, when I say uh, contrast for me, it's black and white. I don't know the, uh, for me, it's in my head at least, I don't know the right definition. I think there is many. Uh, for me, it's black and white. Uh, so not the color it's really really important to have many different colors uh so variation of colors like uh, complementary colors and all these kind of things it's super important but having a really bright or really dark uh things i try to avoid if there is if, if i have two elements i try first to separate them with different colors than uh, just uh, darkening one and adding some lighting on it. Okay, and so uh, th this next one that was uh, in regards to the scene, I think we we covered this one though. It says, uh, "Can we get a closer look at the masks you use for slope blur?" I think we kind of started to show that at the end. We can jump uh, into that again if you like. Yep. Uh, did I have some things there? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. For the scene, maybe easier on the ground. Uh, uh, uh. For example, this kind of mask I was using. What can I see? So you can see really stroke shapes. But this one is for the black mask. I'm not using the blur slope only on black mask. I'm also using them uh, as a filter on the overall look, for example. Uh, it's maybe something. Stars, we'll just check with uh, not this one. Is there a ground somewhere? I don't know what it's displaying. The sky effect and not the ground modifiers. Okay. Uh, this one, I think uh, it's not the same folder. This one is mainly for cleaning and adding the last stuff. Uh, to go back to because yeah, sometimes i uh, because yeah, my computer is not so powerful, so I I uh, I, I back everything and move to another scene. Uh, just to to be more smooth and with no freeze. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, maybe you should add something. Else. Yeah, something for the. Slope blur mask, it's easier to see them here hmm. on the strokes. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a pile of slope blurs. Like a basic crunch. Yeah, and so you have a, an entire effect stack there building up that, that finalized mask. Yes, many iteration, like adding more and more stuff. Here and there. And what, what's one is similar? Colors. Yeah, it's basically basically it for the slow blurs uh, filters. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, looking at some more questions here, uh, Tangi. Um, yeah. 
there's there's another one that's talking about um, how how do you handle the UVs and they're asking like um, are you using it in the the content creation app or, or or some other program? I'm seeing so many programs to unwrap UVs, but just never know what the best. Do you have any advice on on working with UVs? Uh, for this scene, I was corporate. It's only used uh, using the Substance Painter UVs, automatic UVs. Uh, it's yeah, it's pretty impressive the the way it's automatically automatically uh, create uh, uh, UVs. Uh, for this scene, it was enough, uh, but of course for uh, for a video game, uh, it's always better if you're doing it manually. Uh, in production, I'm using a 3ds Max. Uh, sometimes I'm. It's another uh, uh, strange workflow, but most of the time I separate uh, all my elements in 3ds Max, then uh, going into ZBrush, doing the the pelting or the unwrapping into ZBrush, then go back to to Max to do the to sort them uh, together because uh, the way it's unwrapping in ZBrush is really well optimized, I think. Uh, on my uh, my point of view, it's cleaner than the uh, pelt in uh, in three days max, and I I didn't test so much on other software mainly because this workflow is is okay for me. Good, good, yeah, and and you said that you also use the Substance Painters UV unwrap as well. Yeah, so, for this scene, I only yeah. use uh, the oh. Substance Painter auto auto UVs, and for a scene like like mm -hmm. it, it's I think it's definitely uh, uh, enough. Uh, and it's the same if you want to for uh, iteration uh, when you are um, testing stuff in your engine or the first iteration of uh, in production, uh, auto UVs are really really nice because you can just test it, test your asset, and um, if you're, maybe you can uh, let it for, I don't know, two weeks, and to be sure your art director will not say, ah, I want to recreate everything from this asset, at least you're not losing, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, four hours for your UVs because it's not the funniest part. And um, when you're sure it's final, uh, you can create uh, homemade, um, UVs, if if needed, sometimes it's not. Sometimes a UV, uh, auto UVs, it's enough. Uh, but yeah, in second part you can do it. Uh, the good thing with Substance Painter is that they uh, remember the the position of your strokes and all your generator uh, will be uh, will adapt on the new UVs. Uh, except the when because I use the UV mask for one step, but all other thing. If you change the UVs, it will be automatically uh, still working, and it's really, uh, really, really useful in in production uh, because yeah, you can edit uh, your stuff on the fly. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see uh, another question here about the about in painting about the strokes. It says, does uh, do the strokes work at all angles? Uh, I try to, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, it's two-sided uh, strokes, but as you can see, the worst part, I guess, it's here because yeah, it's plain, so there is no, it's not completely volumetric, so it's not no, working it's everywhere. So yeah, I try to choose the best angle to kind of rotation all the time and sometimes uh, hiding one plane with another one and this kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, you can see the the work from uh, Mickey Bench is really, really uh, well done. It's really hard to to detect the plane. Uh, here, it's yeah, it's still possible. But yeah, basically, it's still working uh, for the most part of it. Uh, All right, so uh, yeah, just checking through. I, I think that's pretty much all the questions that, that we have for today. So uh, with that, uh, we can look at start ending the stream. Uh, so here, I just want to um, actually just make it a quick 
check here. Okay. So, uh, yeah, with that, I'd just like to uh, thank everyone for joining us here today. Uh, Tongi, it was an honor to hang out with you and discuss your work. Uh, thank you for your time and sharing your expertise here with the Substance community. Uh, thanks again to everyone. And so, uh, Tongi, if you have any uh, closing kind of closing remarks for us. Uh, yeah, thanks for, for Adobe to give me the opportunity to, to create this, uh, this scene. And thank you to everyone in, in the chat. I didn't read it, so maybe I shouldn't thank everyone, but uh, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> No, everything uh, was everything. Everybody was very, very positive and happy to hear what you have to share. So good. The only troll was Jerry's, I guess. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have some of those guys. It's awesome. So it was good. We had we got to see uh, Jerry's and uh, Magdalena, Nikki's here, I think, uh, Vincent. Uh, so yeah, really cool crew. Uh, great to see all those guys here. Okay. Yeah, but it was awesome working with you, Tongi. Yeah, the whole team. So uh, we really greatly enjoyed uh, what you had uh, created for us. Uh, there's always a lot of people asking about like stylized art and what you can do. So it uh, was really cool. Man, I think this Siri thing on my phone just went off. That's creepy. <laughs> so anyways, uh, thank you so much for, for all that you've done with that. And again, I'd like to say thanks everyone for joining us today on the stream. Uh, thanks again. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. And we will see you next time. Talk to you later. Yeah.